Mr. Mike Hallett. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh! Because, you know, Jason and I were just talking, you know who we need to have back on is Mike. We, yeah. haven't, we haven't talked to him for a while. Yeah. Maybe some of our listeners haven't heard about the Caesoria Dragons. And there he is right there. So I pull over and he pulls over and here he is. It was meant to be. And, and it's the anniversary of the Caesoria Dragon mm-hmm. Discovery. How about that? Yeah, it gets here. Uh, we were just talking... Just a minute ago, Mike, and you were well, like, man, this is like 10 years, I think, tonight. Yeah, just on on me tonight. You know, I was sitting there thinking about it just before I was coming over. And, uh, yeah, this is a very special night in Caesarea Dragon's Discovery history because it was on this day, the day before Thanksgiving, in either 2003 or 2002, when I actually put it all together and saw the Caesarea Dragons for the very first time. I mean, I've been working on the project for a long time. So, working excavation, we dig up the ground every day up at this, uh, well, it's a, it's a huge prehistoric graveyard. And we're seeing all these things that look like dinosaur shapes. You've got like skulls sitting there, humping bodies, but they're not dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. They're something totally different and they're much larger, but everything's turned to stone. Right. You know, so all the skulls are stones, the spikes are stones. And I was trying to figure out what was the dinosaur connection because, of course, like all of us, we've only seen dinosaurs. And so I'm looking around thinking, there's a dinosaur connection to this. How does it all put? To, how does it all work together? So I worked on it for months and months and months. You know, as we dug up the ground every day, I was like trying to draw, draw diagrams of the shapes that we were pulling out. Mm-hmm. And as I drew them, they were prehistoric marine reptile shapes. And you've got a skull, a full set of teeth, a humping body. But uh, it, it took forever. And it was on this day that I got off early, and uh, I talked to my best friend. I'm like, hey, let's go over this. Let's go over here where I've been doing my research. I want to look. And so we talked to the uh, quarry manager, and he gave us permission because I was buying landscape rocks out there every single day, okay. load after load. And uh, so we start searching around in the disturbed area of the graveyard. And then I got the idea to move higher and higher into the undisturbed area of the quarry that they hadn't mined yet. Because these pieces are all on top 45 feet in the dirt, and then it goes to bedrock. So we're sitting there looking around. It starts to rain a little bit. and. Uh, I'd already figured out what the skulls were, because I found a couple of skulls a couple of weeks earlier, and so I knew the size of the skull. But the skulls had been removed in the disturbed area, and they were just sitting aside because they were too large to put dump trucks. Now these skulls are how big, Mike? Um, on average, 10 feet. Wow, and that's a big skull. Yeah, you're talking 7,500 to 15,000 pounds on these skulls. Wow. Okay. And so there was four of them that were put together. And I work on it and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what's the dinosaur connection? I'm parking next to these four skulls that have been set aside. And I look over and hey, it has a right side and a left side. And it has jaw lines going down the side. Mm. And it's cut off at the back and comes to a front. And it's a right and a left half. Wow. And there's four of them there. And the third one, I couldn't figure out. But one, number one, number two, and number four were clearly skulls. But that's all it was, like a great big stone, but it was clearly a skull. Mm-hmm. Because everything had been stripped away from it, and it was just sitting there. So uh, I, I, I kept working my science project, and then uh, the, the quarry manager allowed me to go up. And the higher up we got, there it was. The same skull that I've been studying for the last couple of weeks down below, there it was, and it was still attached to its body. Wow. It's sitting in a hill, so the hill was eroded. It's called the final mile up there. And uh, there's the skull looking right at me. It still has its crown spikes attached to it. A lot of the facial spikes have all kind of washed down and they're sitting in front of it and the teeth are starting to show out of the bottom. And then behind it is the neck and it's spiked and then the body starts humping behind it, fully spiked. And I'm like, damn, I finally figured it out. That's what it is. And then I looked around and there's another one and there's another one and another one. It was making the age and the size leap to understand what these creatures were. Because we've all grown up to dinosaurs, sure. so when, when you hear the word prehistoric biology, advanced biology, you think immediately of a T-Rex or an Allosaurus right, or right. Stegosaurus, right. but that's not how Caesarea dragons work. And here I am, I'm looking at something that's giant, and it's pure stone. Now how you giant? Know? Put put some dimensions to this for uh, I'm putting um, 130 to 300 feet. Holy crap. That's huge! On the Caesarea this dragon. This is massive, yeah. But, you know, let's put it in perspective. Now, back 220 million years when the dinosaurs first came about, uh, by 210 million years, 10 million years into the dinosaur era, you're looking at 130-foot dinosaurs at that point, Supersaurus. Right. And so, you know, it's not unheard of. Exactly. But to put it in perspective, because the the 130-footers are the largest we've ever dealt with. And here I'm looking at something 300 feet long. Yeah. And I'm seeing teeth that are almost as large as a T-Rex skull. I mean, wow. these things are giant. Wow. And so, easily as big as an Allosaurus skull. Mm-hmm. And we, we just kept working the project, and, and 
it was interesting because here we are, I'm standing right in front of a large prehistoric marine reptile. And I'm thinking, you're dirt and you're stone, but you are definitely prehistoric biology. And then once I got the, because I'd studied that skull for so long, and then here it is still attached to its body, up higher in the undisturbed part of the quarry, and then I'm able to put the size perspective, then I can see how wide the body is. Because the, the hill slopes, it has a really good slope. So on the one side of the body, it's totally eroded, and you can actually see the size perspective. But on the uphill side of the body, it's still buried. So you're getting a one-half view. Gotcha. And, and then as you come up the hill, then you can start to see on the top where the bodies have started to erode, and you can actually see the hump uh -huh. and get the overall length perspective. I got you. And so now, before you go any further, do you have a website that people can go to to look at what we're, what you're talking about while you're talking about it? Sure. Um, we have uh, Caesoria.com, S-E-A-Z-O-R-I-A.com, and it has a bunch of initial um, photographs on it and some of our early laboratory research work. And uh, it's been, our website over time has been hit by, I believe, 126 countries around the world. Wow. And uh, we've had certain days where we've been hit by, uh, one day we were hit at 63 countries and all 50 states in the same day. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, we were, awesome. we were blogged by a big science blogger back east on uh, Seed Magazine. Oh, I was just going to say, it was probably the day after you had been on our show. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a large spike, man. <laughs> uh.